Okay, it's time for your ass to get out of here. Get your ass out of here. Oh, bad. I had bags on these hot hands. How am I supposed to wear these without no bags on? Today, we're looking at your favorite pawn shop where new talents for Broadway are discovered daily. From a talented chinchilla owner to a customer suffering thanks to a woman trying to return fake diamonds, all the way to a remote thief to a lady with no receipts to a customer who absolutely has to have one. Things get intense in the store every time the Golds try to enforce the golden rule. No receipt, no returns. This lady claims that she spent a grip in the store, but if she's to have any help of reclaiming her money, she needs to get a grip on her temper. But all we know is that it's easier said than done. Hi. How are you doing? Good, how are you? I asked for a chinchilla scarf. Yeah. And you sold me a rabbit. A bunny. How do you know it's rabbit? Because my girl told me it was rabbit. I took it home. She it, threw it back at me and told me this ain't chinchilla, this is rabbit. Only one thing's going to clear this up, and of course the customer doesn't have it. Who throws away the receipt before deciding how satisfactory the product is? Do you have your receipt? I don't have a receipt. You don't see this? Look at it. It's flying through there. Look at that. Ain't nothing chinchilla about it. I want my money now. Have a good day. You too. I want my money. Man, I spent good money up in this bitch. Why are you so violent, girl? Go on up out of here. Looks like the answer is everybody who comes to American Pawn and Jewelry. The next customer on our list has a ton of diamonds, but with no leg to stand on, there really is little the Golds can do for her. That's the golden rule. My niece bought me some earrings from here. Oh, that was nice. Bought, uh, one of the diamonds was missing, and I wanted to know, can I get my money back? Do you have the uh, receipt? No. Do gifts come with a receipt? Second of all, no cash. on the receipt it says no cash refund. One more problem that's really key to this whole thing. Mm -hmm. These are fake. There are many things wrong with this lady's jewelry, and Ashley can swear it didn't come from them. Of course, the customer doesn't like the sound of that. Nobody does, and things get more real than her earrings. Well, um, excuse me, anybody buying any jewelry from here? Don't get no more jewelry from hey. here, because Good. Hey, hey, oh, no, hey, no. Get out of here. Get out of the store. Two options. You, you pick whichever option you want. You can leave. No, I'm Second going option. up a where. Second option what? is you can get the receipt. Wait a mother minute. Now get your hands off. I guess Don't you leave. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be back. I'll be back. See you then. Blue ass baby. When a purchaser brings his aunt with him to fight for his rights, you can be sure that it's not going to end well. But if there are any doubts, his response to Seth's golden question clears it up. I'm Barbara. Nice to meet you. And this is my nephew, nice Leon. Leon. Hey, Leon, nice to meet you. We came up here a couple of weeks ago, and my nephew had pawned his TV in. Uh -huh. Right, so he pawned about three months ago. Yeah, so we're up here now, and all he wants is a remote for his TV. You ever see it that you, where you purchased it? Only thing uh, I have. There's no evidence a remote was part of what this lady's dearest nephew bought. But guess when it comes to family, she doesn't believe in following logic. Now it's too bad for the duo that Seth doesn't subscribe to theatrics. Oh, I got it right here. That's the barcode for the TV. Oh, you took the barcode off the TV. If we could just get, get a remote off. for the TV, right. you know, that'd be all good. I can sell you a universal remote no, if you no, like. No, 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 no. He pawned the no. TV. It was a remote to You want to buy one? So you get my nephew his remote no, right no, now. Yeah. Uh, it's your auntie. Oh, auntie. 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 We're going to get your remote. Auntie. Let's go. Auntie. Auntie. What? While the fights for proof mostly happen in sales, sometimes those in pawn also get their proof mixed up. Stuff, my two TVs. I need your ID or the ticket. Uh, my what? ID or your ticket. I don't have no ticket or no ID. My stuff was stolen in pawn. Hey, what's your issue? Two TVs were stolen. A ring. And I just drove up here from Flint. I need my. So did you make a police report? Can I do it back here? The lady may have no ticket or even the most basic form of ID. Maybe she's a sleeper cell agent. But what she does have is a healthy dose of crazy, which she hopes is going to help her buy a TV. Get my get my bitch! What? If I'm going to have to get ratchet? You don't pound on my window! What the fuck? I'm with the you can't! Oh, yes, I can! No, you can't! I'm not leaving out of here. My. I get my out. Now. I'm not leaving out of here until I get my Right there. Doors right there. Have a good day. Because you got a big dude, you think you hard? Most customers fight because they got no receipt. 
but is rare to see one fight because she wants one. This lady's got to be a pro at doing her tax returns, or in this case, her boyfriend's returns. And I had got my TV out of pawn. Okay. They didn't give me a receipt, and I need the receipt. We don't give out receipts. What you mean you don't give out receipts? We don't get receipts. Y'all give out receipts. I do business with y'all all the time. You're sure you're at the right place? Well, that escalated fast. What other proof of payment for her own stuff does a lady want? Except that it's back at home with her like the pawn never happened. I need a receipt. My man needs to know what the f I spent my money on. And you sitting there looking all stupid and f You can look at me like you stupid if you want to. I want my mother receipt. We don't give our receipt. Just because you don't agree with my rules doesn't mean you can act like a fool. Can I get my receipt? My man wants to know what the f if she doesn't get into trouble with the IRS, she'll definitely get into trouble with the police. Who goes to somebody's territory and threatens them with arson? Okay, it's time for your ass to get out of here. Raising your voice does not get you better service. The only thing it does is get your ass thrown out of here. We hear funny excuses all the time at the store, but one you don't hear often is that somebody stole my ticket. Okay, to what end? Nobody's taken anything out of pawn with no means of identification. Hello. Hi, how are you? Fine. I'm coming to get my earrings out. I ain't got my pawn ticket, but I got my ID. Okay, you know it's going to be a $7 charge for the ticket? Right, but somebody stole my ticket. Ma'am, can I help you? I'm over here in some Who yelling. are you? Who are you? Manager, can I help okay, you? Okay, first of all, y'all got all this money, and y'all can't make me a copy of my no, you don't have your receipt. The $7 extra charge for having no receipt has already gotten the customer into a twist, and when she finds out that there's more to lose, she loses her cool. Can't say I can blame the lady, though, with Ashley brandishing the receipt in front of her like that. Oh, bad. ticket that you didn't have them when you brought them in, we don't have them. I'm going to whoop your ass. You are? You them cars in the back of I'm going to your cars up. And it looks like it's probably time for this lady to get out of here before she ends up hurting somebody. Get out. You get out. Put me out. Put me out. You got to put me out this bitch. Hey. I ain't going no my you know, that's bitch. Joe. I don't care who he is. Okay. Put your stretch pants on. Oh, I'm Girl, sorry. A biker with attitude and no receipt gets the only remedy for people like him when he starts yelling at Karen for a miracle. Uh, I want my money back or... You bought it here? Go, yes. This coat looks a little beat up to me. Yeah, you're telling me. I'm not very happy. Do you have your receipt? No. Does this dude realize the number of people walking through that door daily? Except that he's Ryan Gosling's twin, there's zero chance of Karen remembering the guy. I want my money back or I want another coat. Can't help you unless you have a receipt. I can't give you another call without a receipt. Take, I'll just take one. Then. What do we got? Uh, Byron? What do we you got? You want to assist this, sir? What do we with got here? What's wrong? I'll take this whole damn wreck. Hold on, my man. Hold on. I'll take this man. whole wreck. What? This ain't, ain't, this ain't you, you, man. Calm down, man. Let's go. What? The last customer on our list isn't too happy with what he got the last time in the store, but this little issue can't work out without a receipt. Hey, man, I need to talk to somebody about this. This piece of junk I bought in here just a couple days ago don't work now. It's broken. Do you have your receipt? I don't have a receipt. I didn't think I needed to keep it. There's nothing I can do for you without a receipt. If you had the receipt, I could give you an exchange. I could give you something. I don't want an exchange because it's probably going to be some again. Les has a solution to all kinds of problems, and it's none other than his trusted security. As expected, Byron provides the swiftest answer to the meathead's issues. Anything. And you can back off too, man. Like all this uh, security great. standing around or whatever. I don't give He's a rat's ass about that. Well, we don't you know give I mean? a rat's I want my ass money. Either. Like I said, there's no that. receipt. Look here, man. You better back off, too, oh, man. Like, don't, don't touch him. Don't touch him. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. This customer came walking into the store with a very ferocious beat to her steps, making it clear that she was pissed off by something or someone. Hi. Hi. I have a question for you. Yeah. Okay. I went to get my purse back to make my payment. She's telling me this is expired. That's my purse right there. That one right there is black one. Naturally, the scenario she claims now could actually happen, especially after her ticket has expired. But the thing is, Ashley apparently knows how the purse truly made its way onto the shelf. This is your purse. That's my purse right there. How do you know that's your purse? Because I know my purse. 
here's the money, I want the purse. That bag was never in pawn. Since the lady remained delusional, I actually tried to make things clear to her in an attempt to stop her from causing more scenes than she already has. If you want to buy it, I just want to look at it and make sure it's not mine. Okay, first of all, I'm, I'm not, not First of all, don't talk to me like I'm a idiot. You. Give me my purse or I'm going to come over that counter. After that very uncomfortable moment they spent staring each other down, the lady knew she wasn't going to get her way as easily as she thought she would. So she rethought her steps and tried to do the unthinkable. Okay. Oh my God. Get, get your hands off me. Have a nice day. Let's go. Oh, Walk yeah. yourself out, you. you. Walk get yourself, your hands off Walk me, yourself out. You'd think those were the worst ones yet, but wait till you see this lady who was trying to bring in her TV. Well, she was until it suffered a pretty nasty fall. Oh, hell no. Excuse me. Excuse me. Bitch, you hear me? Bitch, what you made bitch? me drive my TV. You dropped your TV because you wanted to drive. With how hard they were going at it, it almost seemed as if the lady was getting ready to get into a physical altercation with the other lady if need be, but Ashley immediately made her way over to handle the situation. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. hey What's up? you. She broke my TV I when I came the door. How did she break your TV? Because I told her to hold the door and I dropped it and it cracked. It's cracked. Okay, so what do you want me to do about it? Um, I don't know. Is you the manager? Yeah, so maybe you're you the manager, but you ain't acting like that isn't exactly the right way to treat a person trying to help. You can't hold it against Ashley if she decides to toss the annoying woman out now. Like I said, bitch, you gonna pay for my bitch. You gonna hey, pay for bitch, my bitch, is you help? What is you gonna do? Bitch, bitch you gonna pay for my Don't act stupid. Despite having gotten her just dessert, the woman refused to relent on her attack and kept on talking up a storm, throwing threats all around without a care to the world. Who is the type that will get smacked? Really? Really. Try it. Y'all got me f***ed up. You have Go get one my minute TV. to get your you out of our me. store. After having missed payments for two whole months, this woman had the audacity to complain about the service she got when she tried to pay just a dollar. Hurry up, please. Ooh, I gotta be working three o'clock, so please. Ma'am, do you wanna come back when you have more time? Can you get somebody else to uh, serve me? If she would have looked at our policy, she would see that on a $1,200 loan, you need to pay $50. Since she seemed uneducated on how things work, Les took it upon himself to kindly explain how things actually work around the shop. If you put anything in layaway, you have to put more money down. But, okay, I understand that. I'm not old, I'm not seen now, I'm not a So fool. you even, well, if you're not a fool, why would you even come in and offer a dollar? The lady was a nasty piece of work, but they had no option other than to attend to her. A customer is still a customer, after all. Despite her very condescending tone, they could only try to help her regardless, as long as she doesn't go too far, of course. Time is ticking, time is So money. why don't you come back when you have time? I live way in my land. I'm not coming back. This is poor business. I done gave y'all so much money, and then this is how I get treated. Man, you're you know what? I hope you and your money live good on this earth, because when God comes back, baby, you know, you're going to be okay. just. Of all the stuff that she's done, what she said was the straw that broke the camel's back. The Golds decided to take necessary measures. you. Please. It takes a lot for my dad to get upset. This lady took it to a whole new level. She crossed the line. Looking to sell a watch, this customer walked up to Les, asking him for $400 for a watch he claimed to have gotten for double the price. Doing good, man. Good, what can I do for you? Let me at least like 400 for this watch right here. What can I do for you today? Can I get like 400 for this watch right here? We deal in high-end watches. This was worthless. Nothing for us to deal with. Les appraised the watch and pegged it out to be absolutely worthless, a point he made sure to pass across to the man. But instead of just taking his business, this man decided to fly off the handle instead. Well, give me like 450 for this Why watch. Why are you yelling at me? I got a baby on the way, dog. Congratulations. I'm sick of living, I'm sick of living at the crib, man. My girl on my head. Well, give me 400 for this watch. 400? No, I'm sorry. Hey, this is a bull ass place, man. This whole ass place. Les tried to be as nice as possible as he could to the guy, despite how annoying he was, kicking up a fuss and all. He went further and he did something that made Les lose his cool. Uh, excuse me. Hey, bitch, pick it up. Follow me. Y'all, don't touch me, homie, dog. Touch me, dude. I'm out this bitch, man. Y'all, 
Man, for real. While trying to deal with a thieving employee, Ashley got dragged into another drama when she had to deal with this man who had just gotten his item out of pawn. Bought him in like what, like two months ago? All of a sudden, it's just up now. The nose piece that came off. So can you fix him or something for me? Let me see it. Some bull I'm like, what the is this It's a screw missing, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is. It's quite normal for him to get upset over something like that. It's his item that got damaged after all, but he doesn't have to be that rude about it. Oh. Can you just put a screw in there for me? I just fix my please. I can. I can charge you. You can charge me? Yeah. What kind of is that? I was going to help you, but your mouth just kept talking. Listen, can you just fix my glasses, please? I will pay for it. Okay. 15. Things would have gone quite well if he had just done exactly what he did now, but being the undisciplined yoke that he is, he just couldn't help but make some rude comments along the way. A little short ass. It was not like that. Screws missing his Take Go somewhere else. Let me get your money back. Flat over here. And here's another rude customer who needs a lesson on the proper etiquette needed for engaging strangers especially strangers helping you out of a bind by buying your item. I was coming to buy my ring because I have to pay my rent. It was due a couple weeks ago. Oh, okay. Why you keep looking at my ring like that is real? That is real diamond? No, it doesn't. Yes, it do. No, it doesn't. Yes, it do. This lady thinks that she's some kind of expert and keeps on pestering less with the nonsense that she came up with. $200. 200 Well, what I can do is I can give you 80 $80? $80. $80. That's the only way I'm going to find it. So you're going to give me $200 or not? That was pretty atrocious, asking for more than her item's worth. She might be used to getting her way elsewhere, but Les made it clear that that's not how things are going to go today. How would you Man, Man, what the hey, She can go. She can go. Thank you. This woman came in claiming that she'd pawned her laptop at the store though she didn't have a pawn ticket to prove it. Fortunately, she had her ID with her. Is in here. Show me the ticket. And I'm a, I don't have it with me, but okay. I have my ID. Okay. If you need to see my sure. ID. Oh, there it is. There you got it. Okay, Miss Bowie, we definitely have you for a coat, so you can go right over to the windows and make it. Unfortunately for her, her name didn't get any hits on the computer, and there was nothing that they could do about that. After all, there's no way that they can just hand her a laptop without seeing a ticket to back the whole thing up. It's my computer, yes, my computer. No, you have a fur coat in front. I, and I understand that, but I have also, I have a computer. Check and give me my computer. I checked and it's not here. I mean, damn, I do a lot of business I in know. here. I run this mother I'm like the VIP up in this bitch. Well, if it's not there, it's not there. Now, it might just be another plot to score a free laptop off the store, but there's no way Les would let something like that happen ever. Well, I'm not going nowhere. I'm here till you get my stick computer. Ma'am, stick around. I mean, I try to live a Christian life. She's a nice, polite Christian woman. Yeah, right. If I'm stupid, you stupid. Fine. Now what? We just two stupid mother. Well, the problem is this okay. stupid mother isn't going to yeah, help. Yeah. This customer just makes you wonder what's wrong with the world. Ashley couldn't even manage to hide her shock when she found out why she came to the store. Coming in to try and get like. Fifteen hundred for this. Okay. I'm trying to get my baby daddy out of jail, and I've been really trying to work things out with us. You're true, right? Think... That's my man. He does me good. Okay. Although the entire thing is absolutely astonishing, Ashley can only move on. After all, it's a deal waiting to be made. Are you gonna check the cars out or what? You want like fifty bucks? No, not fifty bucks. I want 1500 for I these. I can't help you with that. I said. I don't care what you said. I don't want to hear that. I want 1500 Some people are just bonkers, and that's really clear to see. After all, a card store would obviously be the best option for items like this. And to top it all off, her demands are just way too unreasonable. They don't owe her a dime. 1500 What part of that you ain't understanding? I understand everything. You ain't You're not getting it. Let's play some sports. 100. Seth had to attend to this guy who came in looking to get a camera. What he did after he showed him an affordable piece of the ones they had available had Seth floored. I'm looking for cameras. What kind of good cameras you yeah, got? Yeah, whatever you need. Yeah, so some point oh, and shoot okay, right over here. here. All right, yeah, I think I'll take this one. 
That logic is absolutely absurd, and there's no way Seth would just let him keep their merchandise on his person without having paid for it. Can you just keep it on the showcase for me, please? Why can't you just keep it Well, if you pay me for it right now, I'll let you put it in your pocket. Byron, you want to hold on to this gentleman's camera that he's about to purchase from me? What, are you trying to call me a thief or something? No, I'm just telling you that he'll hold on to your camera until you're ready to buy something. Since the guy seems to be pretty lacking in the wisdom department, Seth decided to share a few nuggets of his own. Part of being the owner of this place, it doesn't have to make sense to everybody as long as it makes sense to me. Well, it sounds to me like you're trying to call me a thief. I ain't no, no thief. Well, I'll solve that. Thank you, sir. He's just irredeemable at this point, and if he wasn't a thief like he claimed, he wouldn't have had an issue paying for the camera. Now, would he? You can leave, sir. I'd like to be able to walk around the store, and then I'll show you my money when it's time to clock out. Byron, clock his ass out. This woman walks into the pawn shop for anything around the $100 range. A watch or an excellent band would do. But little did the customer, Ashley or her girlfriend, know that they were about to go into an entire bout the next minute over a $100 card. Yeah. Hi. I'm looking for a watch. Buy me about $100. I got $100 to spend. All right. Do you want a leather band, a metal band? Let me see this right here. Good on you. It was $100. 100 I'll take it. Okay. What is this? It's a $100 gift card. All right. Gift card? $100 gift card. These are not our gift cards. Ashley explained that the card is meant to reduce how much you pay and is never to be used for any direct payment. But this customer is not waiting to have that conversation. Turn around and swipe it, okay? There's no swiper on this. So you telling me I'm losing $100? What is she going to say? What y'all don't understand up in here? Show her where oh, the I money's at. My money. He's going to show you where the money's at. Okay, we'll walk up. I need my money. Why don't you show mad for? Go ahead. The crazy customer takes a cone in exchange for her television. Now, she plans to scare an employee and make them do what she thinks, but Les is trained as employees well. Procedures first, actions later. It's like a good honeymoon. Meanwhile, standing behind the counter is Hurricane Ashley and behind the customer is Big Joe. Excuse me. Hello? Hi. Yes, um, my boyfriend found my TV, um, and I need it back. I don't got no slip or nothing, but I need my TV. What you can do, since it's uh -uh. not legal for us to look up somebody no. else's look name. Up. TV lady. No, I will not. Don't, uh, uh, don't do that to me. Or what's going to happen? Look, bring your ass out here talking to me. This. I think this is my TV over here. Excuse me. This looks like my TV right here. First off, you don't exactly look like you own a TV that large. Second, don't ever go beyond what you can handle. And before you go and do something stupid, Hurricane Ashley is going to have Big Joe send you out of the premises. The good thing is that Big Joe doesn't have the time for her nonsense and drama. Can you get this? Because this man. Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. So if you want to buy that one, no, I don't want to buy. I want my mother TV out this bitch. I ain't buying. Bye. Get your big ass off me. Get your big ass off me. I suggest you leave. I do what I want to do. Bye. Get your big ass off me. Oh, y'all don't want to give me my. I'm taking this. <laughs> Seth and Rich got themselves a flirty visitor in the form of a customer, dolled up and sucking on a pacifier. But don't be fooled by the appearance. Baby's got the spirit of business running in her veins. Yeah, you need some help? I'm you got it? My name is Bebe. Bebe, no kidding. Bebe. Nah. What's your name again? I'm Seth. So, you need a loan or you want to sell it? Hello. Hello. About 300 bucks. Since Baby's not getting the necessary attitude and attention from Seth, she turns to Rich, who has fixated his gaze on Baby. In that singular moment, Seth gets the idea to do something crazy to brighten the mood before proceeding with the sale. <laughs> you want to taste my ring? No. Or lick it? No. Would you suck on my pacifier for 20 bucks? You can lick it. I know you want to. No. Seth is bent on getting that pacifier in someone's mouth, so he upped the offer. Rich is aiding Seth, but the security guy's not in league with all of this, as the pacifier goes from baby's mouth to Rick's. I'll buy you lunch for the week.
I think you're into it. Ready? <laughs> this customer is an attention seeker at the pawn shop today. She came to the mall to cause a stir on an item she bought and had tested before leaving the premises. Hey, don't walk past me no more. I've been standing here forever trying to get somebody to help me. Oh, you're going to ignore me. Hi. You a manager? Hi, I'm Ashley. You need some better help up in here. I've been standing here going on almost two hours trying to get some help. Ashley is savage AF and at the same time handles the situation as professionally as she can. This customer is one massive a woman Ashley cannot risk competing with, but she met her plus-sized match in Kelvin, who chicken-walked her stinking carcass out of the store. I bought this thing yesterday. Ain't nothing. Won't work, won't do nothing. So, did you test it out before you left the store? Look, Back you know what? Out the door. No. Now. Now what? This, you know what? <laughs> Don't try to walk me out. What? 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 The disgruntled wife wants her ring back after her husband had pawned it off for some personal cash. When Ashley asked for the ticket to validate her claim, she had only a laundry story for an excuse. That's me. How can I help you? My wedding ring that's $5,000, you guys have it. I want it back. Okay. I just want to come in, pay for it, and get my ring back. Did you make a police report? No, I didn't make a police report. The hell am I going to make a police report for? Now Ashley feels pity and wants to help, but the company policy demands a pawn ticket to show proof of ownership. And this seems like a family issue. She doesn't want to put her neck in it, but the conversation gets heated in a pinch. Think about asking her husband for the ticket. Oh my God, I want my ring. Can okay, you so get let in the me... computer okay, so and let look me... up the name, okay, tell me how so... much I owe you. Let me talk. Give me my ring. You bring your butt out here and you assist me out. Wait, bring it. Do you shut up for a oh, second? I ain't never shut Get up. Get the hell out of here. No, it's time to go. Up yours. I want to see you walk oh. out. A man with an unhappy home tries to intrude into Les Gold's marital history and gets what he deserves. Dude's got a foul mouth, fake jewelry, and maybe a fake wife, as he might just be delusional. Hi. Hi, how are you? Brian, I'm last. Nice to meet you. I need to... Get a watch for my wife's anniversary. Oh, it's probably worth a lot of money. I just want to bring it up and see what you think uh, you can give me for it. Maybe we'll do a trade for a watch. They're not real. <laughs> give me, a, let me see what you got in watches and take these. I have a lot of watches, but I'm not taking those. He tries to play his cards, and as they're all jumbled up, he picks up the wrong card to play against Les. The family card he took too far, and Les took it personally promptly. I got an anniversary coming up. I'm not getting in trouble. You're married, right? I am. Okay, I've seen your wife. Lucky you. Yeah, lucky me. I don't think so. What did you just say? You heard what I said. Listen, mother There's two things you don't talk about. What's that? My wife and my family. Two people, fat man. Get the out of here. Get the being the most famous pawn store in Detroit, the American Jewelry and Loan attracts all kinds of crazies, and this customer clearly fits the demographic. How you doing? My partner right here, Robert, we want to pawn this. Us has got no choice than to play along with the whole act. Business is business, after all. So, 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 what do you think about this? Be cool, Robert. Be cool. Robert is very cool. Unfortunately, the whole thing's a bust, since the item isn't exactly real. What you think about this? I think it's really cool, but I can't give you anything for it because it's not silver. You can't give me anything for it. Mm -hmm. No. What do you mean you can't give me nothing for this? To further expound on how crazy this person is, this lady claimed that she'd gotten a quotation on TV and expected to get out of there with that same amount. You Y'all told me. I didn't tell you anything. On TV, they said that this pine store give you $200. So have you seen Steve doing our commercials? Fearing how unstable this person is and what he could eventually do if he's not escorted out post haste, Les gives directives to the security. Time to take out the trash, boys. Talk to the boss man. Excuse me. Where the boss man at? Right here. I ain't leaving. I'm not, I'm not 
leaving, man, until I get some money. I'm not leaving, man. And then there's this lady who came in with her friend hoping to get a mink coat. Only issue is that she's confusing height with width. How you guys doing? Hi. How you doing? Good. How are you? How can I help you guys today? I want a mink coat today. Sure. I wear a small. Okay, asking for a small sized coat is just crazy. Getting it to fit is definitely going to be a Herculean task, man. I hope you got some Crisco up in there. Let me see here. Oh, yeah. I like this. Oh, oh, wait, 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 yeah. Now, you'd think after learning the coat she got was the medium, she'd finally ask for the right size, right? <laughs> well, wrong. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, oh, no. Extra small. Extra small. Okay, that's a lie. There's definitely no way a small is going to fit her. Either the places she gets her clothes from have been lying to her or she's been lying to herself. Oh, that's pretty too. That is, that, yeah. Oh, I can't even get my own damn arm in this one. Oh, hell no. Is there somebody else that we can talk to that knows what they're doing around Come here? On. To teach her a lesson, Seth would eventually hand over the biggest coat that she could find. Try this one. This is the one. Okay, let me try it. Let me try, try it. Try it on. Yep. Oh, hell. No, you tried me, mother <laughs> Their attempts to escort this screaming shrew eventually turn into a full-blown tantrum. Well, you no, started it. Like that. Hell, started no, it. Hell, no. Hell no. Get out. Hell no. Get out. Please. I ain't going nowhere. Get out. I am not going nowhere. Next up is this crazy incident that took place when Seth attended to this stranded customer with no cash to get her back home. Is it even running? It was when I left home. It's nowhere near 7 o'clock right now. Okay, but didn't you just turn it to 7 o'clock? No, I didn't just turn it to 7 o'clock. With how defective the watch is, it would definitely be a pretty bad thing if Seth decided to go ahead with the purchase. I'm really not interested in them. You see how it's faded in the back? Mm-hmm. See how it's not working in the front? I see that. See how it's scratched on the crystal? I'm now, her item being fake isn't exactly Seth's problem, so her really entitled attitude and annoying-ass questions just don't make any sense at all. What, 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 what are those? Why you want? I don't want any. Thank you. Mm, that was downright disrespectful. And from her error from jumping to this, there's no way she's going to be getting any help from Seth. The money, I have no way to get home. What about that? Are you not I, understanding? I don't care. I don't give a damn. If you so care, you, you need better, to do you something better, about it. You better give a damn if I care, because if I don't care, I'm not giving you anything. Listen. They eventually sent her packing out of the store, but Joe had to get a really nice tongue lashing in the process. You, get off me. Back the f up, bitch. I told that bitch I need gas to get home. Give my glass. Oh, you gonna sit my over here, you old stinking ass dirty bastard. Ashley is definitely the nicest person to deal with in the entire store. Said no one ever. And any modicum of disrespect is met with a snide comment from her. But it seems like she'd finally met her match in this lady. Hello. Hi. How are you? I don't know. I'm about to see. Okay. So you want to pay off your interest today? Yeah. The woman didn't exactly shy away from spouting as many expletives as she could, which did nothing but great on Ashley's nerves. Like, for real, man, she in here swearing more than a Wu-Tang album. Tell me how much the f I owe Okay, you owe $50.60. How much? $50.60. What the f Now, rather than trade words with this lady and actions is definitely going to lead nowhere, Ashley tried to get her point in the right direction so they could get the whole affair all done with as soon as possible. Sit here and I can explain to you how I got to that amount. Do you know what? You expect so much that you don't even make no motherfucking sense. You nice don't problem. think you like getting riled up and screaming spooks me out? Okay, well, let's catch up again. Well, catch up. Ashley seems like a sucker for pain, man. It was pretty obvious the lady was trying to pick a fight. If she just decided to turn deaf to her rants, maybe she wouldn't have gotten all, you know, trolled this hard. It's called Yiddish. What the f is a Yiddish? Yiddish with a Y. Well, I understand that either. I, I'm, I understand uh, Ethiopian. How about that? Do you want to listen? Hell to the no. Okay, then go pay fifty dollars and sixty cents and come back when Where you want. Where the f is your boss at? I'm the boss, now what? Unfortunately, uh, they went everywhere or talked about everything, but ended up with nothing. Now Ashley had no other option than to tell the lady off. You. Woo! See ya. I didn't know that Jerry Curl Cream got in the way of listening. That's really new knowledge for me, and I'll know that next time she comes in. The older lady wasn't exactly a big fan of Ashley's. <laughs> 
who is. But then there's this customer who came in with the opposite mindset. Ashley. Hi. Nice to meet you. How are you? Good, how are you? What's okay. your name? Lisa. The first thing she had to say was how much she was in love with Ashley due to a very odd reason. How much you have it in pawn for before? Oh, I had it on 120. I was yeah. going to pawn it for 200. Do you want to take a look at it? Yeah, I got a good price. <laughs> I adore you. With her ID in hand, Ashley can finally check to know if they really had any records of her alleged past transactions at the store. Well, here's the thing. I don't even see you in my system. So you lied to me? I do like you. Now that's just a little creepy. Either she's a scammer or just some crazy lady who's really infatuated with Ashley. I mean, have you seen Ashley on the show? You'd almost have to be crazy to be infatuated with her, right? I could give you my phone number. And you could call me, maybe we could discuss all this. What's there to discuss? Well, anything you want. Now, fortunately, their love can never be since Ashley is married and not into women. Maybe I should write a letter to Ashley's husband, see if he can help her dislodge that stick that got wedged up there years ago. All right, step on over. I think I've got a customer for life. It's good to see you. Nice to see you. Ashley tried her best to assist this man who could have been a new addition to their security team if he'd played his cards right. Hi. I need a job application. Okay. What position are you wanting? Uh, I'm trying to be security. Okay, let me get it for you. All right, thanks. For a place with numerous amounts of troublesome characters, the number of security personnel has never been enough. Like, uh, when do you want me to come back? We're going to have to review this, and they will get back to you. Someone told me to come in and fill out the app, and, you know, he said he got me. Who was it? Rich. Rich might be highly trusted with considerable standing in the store, but there's no way he's got the right to decide who gets a job or not. Come on, Rich. He hey. said you told him that you were going to hire him for security. When do you want me to start? To tell the truth, I don't even remember ever talking to you before. It's either one of them is lying or the applicant is just downright delusional. What are you talking about, man? You know what? And you said that I was going to hire you today. Yes, bro. Okay, just... well, then let's make this real quick and simple. You're fired. And so he was definitely fired before he was even hired. Get security, get nice out. Nice working with you. Bro, talk about that outside, right? Man, don't, don't touch You're that. You're fired. Yo, this customer decided to bring in his VHS player that he was hoping to sell. Sorry, dog. I don't think they trade him peanuts here. I'd like to sell this DVD VHS combo. I paid 60 for it, brand new. So I'd like to get about 50 for it. Why would anyone want to torture themselves by standing up to press commands on the VHS rather than to use a remote. The guy must have had a screw loose. Well, I need the remote. Okay, well, and I don't have with the remote, I couldn't give you $50. Okay, well, we can sell you do... Them. Can I talk, please? Okay, that price is just nuts, and there's no way Ashley is going to hand that over. Because he's not leaving until he gets forty dollars. The whole mimicry is what you would expect from a kid, but you can't deny that it was pretty funny seeing how shocked Ashley was. Hey, let's go. Come on. Yep. You forgot your DVD, DVD. VHS DVD. player. Okay, come on. Wes had to approach this lady after he noticed her snooping around the store, moving items from their original places too. What can we do for you today? Yes, I was trying to get a massage chair. All right, man, that's just a complete BS. If she's sure that she could get it for that price off the internet, she should have just gotten it then instead of, you know, running around being a nuisance. Like, hi, I'm going to go to a retail store and look at products and then go and buy it at Amazon. Those people need to die. Yeah, but then you got to pay for shipping. We have it right here, right no, now. No, you can get it for free. For, for free? shipping, yeah. Oh, free shipping? Yeah, free shipping. Yeah, those you are $125, it. those ones. No. Now, rather than negotiate for a lower price like a normal person would, this lady tried to force Les into taking her offer. You can give me this chair for 20 I wish I could. Oh, you gonna do it today. Yeah, I can't lose money. Why the f*** are you losing money? You wanna hear the story? Hell no. The no person, damn story. The Seeing they might meander close to a really messy situation, Byron immediately headed over to keep an eye on things. What's your big Amazon ass over here for? I like big men. I will break you down. I will break him down. 
Seems she really wants that chair and she'll stop at nothing to get her hands on it, but unfortunately for her, there's no way they're gonna just accept her demand. It seems some customers just can't get enough of the golds. And in this episode, a customer who brought in a set of items to pawn uh, has switched her priorities when she met Seth. Yeah, you need some help? I'm you got it? My name is Bebe. Bebe, no kidding. Bebe. Seth tried to nudge her head back into the business that she came for and out of his pants. My TV and my ring, trying to at least walk out with 800. And so what do you need money for? Um, to help my mom out. She was being pushy with the flirting, but Seth didn't want any of that. I said what you need. I know, I said I'm good. So, you need a loan or you want to sell it? Loan. Loan. To Seth's dismay, this lady actually had the gall to make him this very odd offer. You want to taste my ring? No. Or lick it? No. Mm. You want to taste? You want to taste it, Rich? I'm good. Rich, you I'm just good. offered. Good. Since they weren't getting anywhere at all with the negotiation, Seth decided to have himself a little bit of fun to pass the time. Hey, Rick, <laughs> would you suck on my pacifier for twenty bucks? <laughs> Mm. No matter how tempting the price may be, there's no way this person's gonna actually, you know, go through it, right? Ready? <laughs> <laughs> I. It could have been worse, right? At least he managed to get himself some free meals for a week out of the whole thing. That pacifier also could have been in a different body cavity, too. All right, Rick, thank you. I appreciate it. No problem. Um, so, 300 Sure. You want to do it? Great. Thank, thank you. you. Of all the things that Les could have expected to see in his store early in the morning, a zombie definitely wasn't it. Ranger. Mm, Who are you? I'm Richard the Zombie. Now, it's not just any zombie. No, it's got to be an ambitious one who's looking to raise a huge amount of money for his grand dream. I smell fresh flesh that I love to eat, and I want your eat your brain. <laughs> Les was definitely having a good time interacting with this guy, but they had business to attend to and a deal to make. So, how'd you get the uh, metal detector? I've had it for a couple years. Did you find anything with it? A couple quarters. <laughs> The amount that Les eventually offers is nowhere near the amount that he's really going to need, but hey, it's something. Would you take $6? That's fine. Perfect. We got a deal. Thank you, Mr. Zombie. Finally, a lady and her friend walked over to meet Les, hoping he can help them get a mink coat. Hello. Hi, I'm Les. Big sexy. I want a mink. OK. Something sexy. Unfortunately, it isn't the right size and Les finds himself struggling to find the right fit for this lady. Can we get a woman to wait on us? A woman that know about some breasts? Because obviously he too old. The, let me give you the breast man. Having called an expert over, Les believes they might finally be able to get the right coat. I need a large. There we go. That is for my grandmother. That ain't gonna wear that. She ain't 96 years old. Well, since they don't exactly have anything that could satisfy this crazy lady, they decided to make them leave instead. Don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you. Problem, what's wrong? The problem is I want a coat. You are too sexy for my coat. I don't have anything that sexy. Hope, End of story. <laughs> Goodbye, lady. So a lady has mistaken the pawn shop for a government office, apparently. She definitely is not a good liar. There's never been a time that the pawn shop used customers' thumbprints to pull up their accounts. So this lady might need to rethink where she's been. No. Okay, I need one of the two to be able to pull you up. Where's your ID? Well, they always thumbprint me. I don't have it with me. I can pull you up just by but, the thumb. But listen, but I don't have it with me. So how would you like me to pull you up? Seth was just standing by and waiting to be called upon. They say the customer is always right, but when the customer begins to tell an employee how things are done, then that statement might not be accepted. Seth might just fire the employee and hire this customer already since she knows more about the company than anybody else does. Well, let me see your manager yes, ma'am. Well, I'm telling her what the I told her I always come up here. My name is in the computer. She didn't even ask me my 
Maybe before she even told me okay. no. Being an idiot is such an easy task, and from the looks of things, Seth loves to deal with idiots. He's enjoying this. Apparently, this customer wants the manager to make a deal with her without an ID. It's pretty ridiculous. She'll be in here later. Old ass man coming over here trying to disrespect me with his old uh, crusty Last. ass. Last. Who is he? Who is he? I don't know. Les is not making it any better for the customer, so she abuses him. A normal person would see that she's being ridiculed and leave already, but this lady is watching Les and Seth make a character of her, but wouldn't stop acting like an idiot. So I'm not, because I'm telling you to leave. I'm doing business here. You My name is in your you are you are See you later. No, I'm asking you to leave. Period. Yeah. So no, you don't have to touch me, please. You don't have to touch me. Excuse me. The moment Seth gets fed up with the customer, he sends her out. Continuing the conversation with the customer would only make him look like an idiot. Let me go. Let me go, sir. Don't touch me. Let me go. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Nah. It's either this customer is impatient or just wants to pull some legs. She just had one instruction to follow but decided to do it her way. Unfortunately, Seth is someone who loves to take his time. By the time he's done questioning her, she would wish that she never stepped inside. I'm here to pick up my computer. Sure. I lost my pawn ticket. Okay. You have ID? No, I gave it to the lady over there already. I just walked over here and waited a moment. Okay, how many moments did you wait? Seth does not get moved by insults. If not, he would have turned his back the moment the woman called him an idiot. Ironically, she's the one who stepped into the building to make the same request to two different people. So who's really the idiot here? She took your ID. Are you an idiot or something? Okay, so let's go over Damn, the window. Nikki, Jan Jackson break. The slow motion as Nikki walked in with her Janet Jackson braid is hilarious. Nikki definitely felt like a model at that point. Well, at least the woman didn't lie about her ID. Now the savage response from Seth is the best thing about this episode. Here you go to $247. Where's the computer? So you know where you found me over behind that desk? That's where they're gonna yeah, bring Yeah, that's you. where I found you. <laughs> that's where you found Thank me. Thank you. Just when we thought everything was cool and fine, the customer still had another thing to complain about. The problem with idiots is that they always think everyone else is an idiot like them. The receipt shows that her laptop was never in perfect condition, but she's hell bent on getting a new one or some extra cash, and that just ain't gonna happen. I need to see somebody up in here. Yes, ma'am. Yes, my computer's all stretched up and stained up, and it wasn't like this when I brought it here. I did not bring this no. computer in here like this. It's time for you to go. No, I don't want me another computer. Right, you bring right. your what did these customers gain from shouting and making a fool of themselves in the pawn shop? The only thing she ever did right was to lock the comb when she was asked to. Poor cone, man. It had to take the blame for something it didn't do. Kick one of the cones off and have a good day. Thank you. Okay, yeah, we knew it was coming. See? I think we're going to get a twofer. I kick all this out of this bitch. Shovel's brewing here. A customer came for a loan, but is more interested in the 20% promo. The necklace might not even be his. He could have borrowed it from a friend just to get the 20% on top of it. Now, this is pretty hilarious and stupid at the same time. That's what my 20%, right? What 20%, sir? Sign right here say I get 20%. So if you give me $100, I get my 100 plus another 20%, which make 120. You know, at this point, we gotta ask if the shouting is really necessary. Why do they always feel the need to shout? They could communicate like normal human beings, you know? But here comes Seth, the best match for idiots like this one. Bro does not want to read. He just wants the 20 bucks. No, sir, I don't know what you're talking about. Is you serious? Yes, sir. Ma'am, you ain't never seen the sign? I'm supposed to get 120. Sir? I'm supposed to get 20%. You serious? you going to give me 100? Bro, the sign right here say I get 20%. Read it. I need my $20. Frankly, this customer's more interested in the $20 than the $100. Bringing the signpost to Seth doesn't change what it means. This dude's acting like he made the signpost him damn self. I want $100. Hold on, bro. Hold on. Let me prove my point. Hey, you stand up. My man, let us go. I guess you think I You're can. You're not letting me talk, are you? I don't want to let you talk. Man, if you don't want to let, let me talk, get the, 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 the
Now, wait a minute. Does this customer think that after shouting and causing a scene, he's gonna make Seth do what he wants? That would be the most stupid thought ever. Seth is fed up already, so it's time to show him the door. He's acting like the $20 can change his life. Give me my mother honey $20 in this bitch right now. Get the f out. Right. Because you're causing a scene for no reason. Can I get my money? No. The display of stupidity ain't over yet. Seeing that he's lost out on both $100 and $20, he takes the signpost with him. Dude bro's got a strong attraction for the signpost. You know what I'm thinking? This is probably the reason he came to the pawn shop in the first place, right? First it was the cone, now it's the poor plant that pays the price for this customer's stupidity. I want my hundred twenty dollars. I'm gonna get my mother twenty dollars worth. Huh? Twenty dollars worth right there, bitches. Oh man, what the plant did to him? We're not expecting less from a man who walked into the pawn shop with a singlet. Like he can't even stand in a place for a second without shaking. He actually knows that he needs to calm down. Some people are just really ridiculous. Excuse me, can you please assist, please? I'm just trying to get my head. I got brand new motherfuckers playing three up in this bitch. You know what it is. Let me just get my head in the line like everybody I'm just else. Saying, I'm just I got a brand new mother. PlayStation 3, that's all I'm talking about. This bro's high on something, and no one can tell us otherwise. Who acts like this in a pawn shop? He probably left his brain in his room. He's even putting on a short. Like, this customer is the physical representation of trouble. Bro left his house just to make a fool of himself. Got all my connecting devices and whatnot, you feel me? You feel me? Hold on, hold on. This ain't mine, this the wrong one right here. Bro! You gonna straight up play me like that? What you, what you gonna run me? What you got your, you got your goons with you? You got your goons? I got goons. No one with 40 goons, as he claims, is gonna walk into a pawn shop looking like a homeless dude, right? Goons got swag. This man here woke up from his sleep, remembered his PlayStation, and walked right into the store from his bed to get it back. Y'all better bring me my motherfucking PlayStation 3. Don't ever threaten me. Listen, man, I ain't threatening you. I'm telling you a promise, boy. Boy, get your hands up off me, big fella. Straight the fuck up, boy. Get your hands off of me. I don't care if you bring in hundreds of thousands of dollars of business. Don't fuck with me. Don't fuck with my children. Don't fuck with my store. Oh, Customers bent on getting a particular amount for his leather jacket. Not because it's worth it, but because he's broke. Like this buster, right? The least he could do is have some manners. But since he couldn't pull that off, Les wouldn't speak any further to him. I'm looking to get some money for it, man. I'd like to get, and I'm going to get, about 50 or 60 bucks. Can't walk out of here without it. I'm, I'm broke. I'm hurting. Got a medical problem I need to uh, deal with, man. All I want is some Money, give me 40 bucks, 50 bucks, man. At least 60 bucks, please, man. Wasn't he just at 40? Yeah, we'll just keep on going up and up and up. This dude should go home with the most stupid customer award. It's only an idiot like him that would want to put up a fight with less. You wouldn't for, have man. a clue how nutty I can be. I'm the craziest mother you ever saw in your life. <sighs> they lucky they got you, man. And then we got three other mother behind you. We're yeah. just not interested in your piece. All right, man. So just, you can walk over that way. Pawn Shop is a business that attracts all kinds of customers, and some of these customers make it a point to make life hard for the poor staff at American Jewelry and Loans. This guy who wants a PS3 is no different. How you doing? All right, how you doing? Good. How much your PlayStation 3? How much you want to spend? Uh, I got 70 bucks. Can't let me go for 70, my man, Good. unfortunately. Uh, they're just a really hot commodity right now, and I can't keep them in stock. Looks like you got a... Seth is trying his best to be professional with this customer. He even offers the man some good options so that they can break even. But this guy does not look like he's even listening to Seth. Even you won't believe what he did next. Yeah, I just took him out this morning. I've seen him for $70 to $80 at other pawn shops. Yeah? With two games. $70 is a good deposit if you want. You can make payments every 30 days. Keep it as long as you'd like. Does it come with a warranty?